Welcome to the MD Edge Daily News for Monday, July 2nd. I'm Nick Andrews. Today, the FDA approves topical anticholinergenic for primary axillary hyperhidrosis. An ob workforce shortage looms, and the cost of care means that 5% of Americans missed out on care in 2017. But we begin with new anthrax vaccine recommendations. All 14 members of the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices voted to approve the anthrax vaccine recommendations for 2018-2019. The recommendations to the committee sought to optimize the use of anthrax vaccine absorbed, also called AVA, in post-exposure prophylaxis in the event of a wide area release of bacillus anthracis spores. In this event, a mass vaccination effort would be undertaken requiring expedited administration of AVA. The committee also recommends that ABXPEP and antimicrobial be stopped at 42 days after the first dose of AVA or two weeks after the last dose. Dr. William Bauer of the Division of High Consequence Pathogens and Pathology at the CDC and his colleagues assessed three non-human primate studies as well as eight human immunogenicity and adverse events studies during the Grading Recommendations Assessment Development and Education. When Dr. Bauer and the work group assessed the studies comparing intramuscular administration with subcutaneous administration of ABA, they rated the overall evidence as grade 2. However, they rated the adverse events data as grade 1. Dr. Bauer says that these forthcoming recommendations will be used by the CDC to inform state and local health departments to better prepare for an emergency response. Oscillate for the topical treatment of primary axillary hyperhidrosis in adults and children aged 9 years and older. The approval was based on the results of two phase 3 clinical studies which were multi-center randomized double-blind vehicle controlled 4-week studies in patients 9 years of age or older with primary axillary hyperhidrosis for 6 months or longer. In total, 463 patients were randomized to receive glycopyronium and 234 to vehicle. Of those 463, about 10% were aged 9 to 16 years. In the glycopyronium group, almost 80% of the pediatric patients and about 73% of the adults experienced a reduction in sweat production by at least half at week 4, compared with just over 50% in both the adult and pediatric vehicle groups. Among pediatric patients, the mean decrease from baseline in the Children's Dermatology Quality of Life Index was about 8 for patients in the glycopyronium group, compared with less than 2 in the vehicle group. In adults, scores of the Dermatology Life Quality Index measure were reduced by over 8 in the glycopyronium group, compared with 4 in the vehicle group. Nearly 57% of adults and 44% of pediatric patients treated with glycopyronium experienced treatment-emergent adverse events, compared with just over 34% of adults and 10% of pediatric patients in the vehicle group. The majority were related to anticholinergenic activity and were mild and rarely led to drug discontinuation. But patients should be advised that they should wash their hands thoroughly after application and that it can cause temporary dilation of the pupils and blurred vision if glycopyronium comes into contact with their eyes. The average age of ob is rising across the country, signaling physician shortages that are projected to worsen over the next several decades. The pinch may be felt especially in areas with high birth rates and few younger ob -gynes. This is according to projections from Doximity that paint a fine-grained picture in agreement with the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists' projections. Those projections show a national shortfall of up to 8,800 ob by 2020, with the deficit of ob potentially climbing to 22,000 by 2050. Because ob start to leave the workforce at around age 59 and retire at a median age of 64 years, this young physician population could affect access to women's health care services within the decade. According to a 2017 ACOG workforce report, women make up nearly half of those entering medical schools, but over four in five physicians entering ob residencies are women. Further, women made up nearly 60% of the ob in active practice in 2017, outstripping all other surgical and medical specialties except pediatrics. The Doximity methodology also took into account the average workload in terms of number of live births per physician per year 
for ob in the various metropolitan areas. Pittsburgh and Bridgeport, Connecticut topped the list of metropolitan areas with the oldest average age of practicing ob -Gynes. You can see a map of the top 10 metro areas with the oldest average ob by clicking on the link in the description. Dr. Christopher Whaley is a researcher from the University of California, Berkeley. Dr. Whaley says that while this study cannot determine causation for the variation in workloads, compensation, or shortages across metropolitan areas, we hope it will continue to serve as a baseline for the size of the challenge. He also notes that this information may be helpful for ob looking to live in areas with increasing need for their expertise. And finally today, the percentage of Americans who went without medical care due to cost rose to 4.5% in 2017, reversing a six-year trend. This is according to a report from the National Center for Healthcare Statistics. The rate was 4.4% in 2016, which represented a slowdown in what had been steady decline over the past five years. Declining rates corresponded with the implementation of the early provisions of the Affordable Care Act in 2010. The 2017 rate varied considerably by age group. Not surprisingly, those aged 18 to 64 years reported that they did not seek medical care at some point in the previous 12 months due to cost. The rate was 1.2% for those aged 18 years and younger and 2.7% for those aged 65 years and older. The report also shows that women and those of Hispanic or black race were also more likely to not get care due to cost. And that concludes this edition of the MD Edge Daily News for Monday, July 2nd. You can find links to these stories along with graphics of data at mdedge.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Daily News wherever podcasts are found. For MD Edge, I'm Nick Andrews.